Hello, welcome to Chapter 1, the Information Systems. This is going to be an overview. Uh, we're going to be learning about uh, managing an information system. All right, now to get started, we're going to go through the learning outcomes for this chapter, and it will be broken down into several videos as this takes a bit of time to get through. The, the materials that I'll be providing in this videos, in these video series, will be a reflection of the textbook. So whatever you hear here should be reflected somewhat in the textbook. It is not to substitute the textbook, it is to augment it and enhance it. So definitely uh, watch the video, but definitely read the chapter. All right, so the learning outcomes is to discuss common applications of computers and information systems. Now, this course is on managing information systems. So we'll be spending a lot of time talking about information systems. To explain the difference between computer literacy and information literacy. What's the main difference between a computer and information literacy? Big topic. Define the, the transaction processing systems and how they work. Define the management. Define what exactly is an, a managing information system. So chapter one really gets into the essence of what the whole course is about. We'll describe the four main components of the information system that are going to be required and discuss the difference between data and information. Explain the applications of information systems. Discuss how information technologies are used to gain a competitive advantage over other companies, very important. And explain the five force model and strategies for gaining a competitive advantage. Finally, we'll review the IT job market. This is very important. It's not just the IT job market, but it's also the accounting, the marketing, the hospitality, or whatever field that you choose to pursue a career in. And we'll look at that. And then finally, we summarize the future outlook of an information system. All right, now, the way that these videos work is you'll find a copy of the PowerPoint on the Blackboard system. So you can follow along with the video. If you want, you can watch it on your phone and then follow along with the computer. I think that's the best way to do this. That way you can pause me when you need a break. And you can also go in and look at all these links as we're progressing through the materials. And I highly encourage you to, to follow this format. So hopefully you've got a cell phone or a tablet and you've got a laptop and you can then watch the video and listen to what I'm saying and then pause it and then carry on. All right, so let's get started. There are many uses of information systems throughout the world. So what are they used for? And they, the book goes off and they start off right off at the beginning, I think, to capture people's interest. And it's primarily to reduce the costs of doing business. So they want to be more efficient. They want to save money. They may want to be more profitable. It's also to gain a competitive advantage in the marketplace, which in, in a sense, it, in, in the bigger picture, that makes more money, right? You're going to save some money by um, becoming more competitive, make more sales and so forth. All right, now some examples of these online um, systems or these systems is education. Now, this is the reason I put this one in here was because we're going to start with learning about Blackboard. You guys are watching this from a Blackboard platform, and that Blackboard is a technically a managing an information system. It's actually a learning management system. So it's uh, a, a different type, but it's it's in the same category. So we're doing all these classes online. Now I do have these little balloon boxes and I've supplemented this uh, bulleted point right here by kind of explaining what is an educational uh, managing information system. So it's a, what it is, it's a software system that allows educators to basically teach online or to augment their classes in a blended format or to help provide in extra information to students. You guys have all been using the Blackboard system, so you have a, a rough idea of what a learning management system is. And there are literally dozens and dozens of different systems out there. Now, as an educator like myself, I use this as one of my primary managing information systems, which is my learning management. In fact, I went to SFU and got a master's degree in uh, learning technologies and specialized in learning management systems. So. This is a uh, just a very uh, just a small piece of what a managing information system is in a very specialized uh, vertical market. All right, now let's see if I can get back to my uh, PowerPoint. There we go, and let's go back into uh, the next bullet, which is actually the Blackboard link. Now, when I click on this, it's going to take me to the Blackboard learning management system. You guys have already been there, so you can open that link up and try that. And there it goes right there. All right, let's go back into this one. Now, 
uh, in here, this is an example of another type of, of uh, collection. This is a collection of all the learning management systems that are out there. Now, this was just at the time of the recording, um, that what they call the 20 best LMS software systems. And the reason I'm showing you this is because we're going to be looking at a lot of different information systems out there. And you're going to pick a particular area that you're interested in for study for your career. Now, I would pick this because that's my career, but you would do something different. Now, I'm, I've gone to this website right here, and it, there's lots of these websites out there, financialfinanceonline.com, and it's coming up with what they refer to as the top 20 learning management systems. Now, I've done a lot of work in this, this field, and to be honest with you, I don't recognize most of these learning systems. Now, I, I assume it's because these companies are paying this company to sell their product. The two key ones would be Blackboard and maybe Moodle, but there is a lot of these different other systems like Canvas, SAP, and so on. There's lots of them out there. All right, so that's an example of a information system for education specifically. Now, there's all these different types. Now, you could be working in an area like uh, a retail, like groceries or retail store like Amazon or something like that. And, I, and you can see here that my, my link here is to Amazon.com. Now, even Amazon, this system right here, although we think of this as a web page, this is really a managing an information system, but it's more focused towards retail sales. So it collects information. It's got a massive database. It, it helps work through. This is one of the, 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 the key point of entry for one of the largest companies in the world. So you can see how important this management information system is from a retail uh, specific industry right here. Tele Commuting. This is. Um, I put this in because we're going to be doing some of this. This is. Uh, this is sort of a new way, especially with uh, since the COVID had come out. Uh, people are working at home. Classes are online. How do you telecommunicate? Anyway, um, so I put this link on here to show that there are systems out there to help with that. There's lots of different systems out there that will let you do that. Uh, social networking. Now, this is another area where there's information systems. The one I selected was not Facebook or Instagram. I selected LinkedIn. I selected it because you're going to need to get an account. Now, if you haven't got a LinkedIn account, you're going to have to put this on your list. You're going to need to go into LinkedIn.com, open up an account, and start putting in your professional portfolio. Now, this will be including all of your education, your work experience, and so forth. You'll definitely want to put a picture on here. I do use this as a way of communicating with my students sometimes when it comes to job placements. Um, I do work with students from time to time and help uh, do co-ops and for other job-related um, tasks, and this is the main point of entry. It's also used as a learning management system when it comes to learning your coursework. And up here in the top right corner, it's called Learning, and it's LinkedIn Learning. Now, Douglas College has spent a lot of money to make sure that all students have access to this. Now, this LinkedIn Learning is going to be part of your course. And I'm going to recommend many, many courses in here. In fact, you're going to have to do this as part of your assignments, which I've done a video on, which you're going to have to go into your um, CSIS 2200 right here. This is my collection of LinkedIn Learning courses. And you're going to have to complete all of these courses as part of your assignment. This is your, your home. Each of these videos pertains slightly to the chapters in the textbook and what's nice about these is that once you complete this course for example supply chain fundamentals this will then add this to your portfolio so what will happen is when you go back into your portfolio you will get a badge of some sort of on your on your linkedin profile all right and i've done a video on that as well so i would encourage you guys to watch that all right, so that would be an example of a system for social networking. Now, video sharing, of course, YouTube, and this is what I'll be also using for this course, is my YouTube channel. So you can, I think the link is on the course outline. So you go to YouTube. I'll just go open up my particular channel right here. And I've got, um, I've got a lot of videos. I probably have a couple hundred uh, videos that I've done. So you can click on, um, not videos, but if you go through the videos, it will show you a list of all the videos that I've completed. Most of these videos right here are for a course I teach called CSIS 1175. This is the programming to C Sharp. And I've put on literally the entire course online. 
in a very detailed, meticulous way. If you ever take that course, feel free to actually watch those if you want to help supplement your course. But under playlists, um, I've got a playlist for our 2200. And you can see at the time of this recording that I've got a few recorded here already. And I'll be adding lectures as we progress through the course. So these are great ways to uh, do the face-to-face, -face, or not face-to-face, -face, the asynchronous. So you guys can watch these whenever you want um, at your leisure. So you can do these and uh, get ready for the assessments later to come. All right, let's have a look at computer literacy and information literacy. What's the difference? Computer literacy. Well, you just look at the title. Literacy means the understanding or learning of computers. So skills in using product type of software as well as having a basic knowledge of hardware software the internet collaborative tools and technologies your overall understanding of how a computer works how good are you at computer skills if you do not have computer skills you will probably uh, not do too well in the job market unless you're going into the trades computer literacy is mandatory in fact this course I'm gonna be putting you guys through a lot of different terminology and concepts and terms you're going to be looking at a lot of different software products so hopefully we'll get your computer literacy up there um, so examples again you should be very fluent with word processors now you might think oh yeah i use microsoft word all the time i can type in stuff but these systems are so complex and the better you are at these the better you're going to be in your job specifically when it comes to spreadsheets there's a course we teach called csis 1190 if you're not taking it you probably should if you're going to work in any kind of office environment, uh, spreadsheets are one of the fundamental core uh, tools that you're going to need as literacy tools. Databases, again, if you're going to be in the computer field, database management systems, definitely. And even presentation software, especially if you're getting into things like marketing uh, or you're getting into management, you're going to need those skills as well. All right, now to help you with these tools, there is a site that Douglas College also pays for. This is called office.com. Now, Office.com is the, the Microsoft Office suite, and you can simply just go to Office.com and you can log in with your Douglas College account. Once you've logged in with your Douglas College account, um, you can, you'll have access to install Office, which means you can install the entire Office system on your computer. If you haven't done so, do that as soon as possible. If you have a Macintosh computer, I would highly recommend that you have a dual boot um, and also have a Microsoft as well as a Mac. A lot of these software tools work on PCs, not Macintoshes. So you might want to have a dual boot on your Mac computers. You can see here on the left hand side, you have access to Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Outlook. This is a personal information system right here. You've got your repository of all your, of your cloud. You guys, all students at Douglas have a one terabyte storage capacity. So you can store up to a terabyte and you, you'll keep that until you graduate, until you become an alumni or you leave the college. If you want to take notes, you want to have some kind of a SharePoint system. You're probably not going to have SharePoint. And there's other apps that you guys can access as well. So how efficient, how literate are you? Uh, what is your literacy rate with all these tools? It should be very high. If it's not, you should start studying and, and learning as much of it as you can. Some of these LinkedIn learning videos will also help with that. Now, this link right here is Google. Google also has application literacy or application uh, programs and you can run off of them. This is their word processor, but they also have things like um, spreadsheets, they have a presentation, and they have a database. It's a, it's a lot more elementary than the Microsoft one. It is free, it comes with your Gmail account, so you might wanna consider using that as well. Some of you probably already do. Now, information literacy. Again, literacy, what is your learning and understanding of information? Well. Uh, information literacy is understanding the role of information in generating and using business intelligence. You see this BI all the time. Business intelligence is really a, a field of study that takes data and correlates it into meaningful information for, for management. And this is, we actually here at Douglas College have a business intelligence or data analytics uh, concentration. I think marketing has one, accounting has one. This is a new field and I would encourage you guys to look at this because it's a great field. A lot of companies are looking for people right now in this area and it does require I think people to have more of an analytical mathematical type of background. If you do have that you may want to 
pursue this. I had a student a couple terms ago who ended up going into business intelligence and ended up landing a job with the Vancouver City as their uh, data analytics manager, which was a fantastic uh, role for that student. So anyway, learning and having information literacy is really a high level area within an organization. So business intelligence provides that data into a uh, looking at data's historical information, the current information, looking at what could happen or predictive views of business operations, um, et cetera, to help them become more competitive with other companies. And if the information now, companies realize this, like Amazon and all these companies, they understand the, the importance of data business intelligence. Without it, they are not going to be able to compete. And that's basically it. And that's why it's, it's so treated and valued so highly now. Now, a couple tools that you may want to look at is Power BI. Now, you can get the student version of this, and you can start looking into this. In fact, if you want, you can select this as your project. So you will be doing a presentation project, as I've outlined in another video. So you may want to consider looking at that. Um, and that's uh, Business Intelligence. I won't go into too much detail on that one. And I use this myself. Now, here at Douglas College, I am re in, re in charge of a lot of the curriculum um, data. So I'm the data analyst, business intelligence for all the courses and programs at Douglas College. So I, I collect all that information, I correlate it, and I visualize the data. So this is an example I want to show you, and it's an interactive tool. So what it does is it answers, it asks a couple of key questions. What's the number of courses by faculty? And what's another question is, what is the number of programs by faculty? And then it shows it in a visualization, and it shows it the data in, um, in, a, in a record format. And there's, there's more data than that, but I don't want to get into too much information. But what this does right off the start, that as a student, if you looked at the visualization, you can see here that the, this is the uh, Commerce and Business Administration, and these are the other faculties. This is Health Sciences, this is Science and Technology, et cetera. So you can see here that the Commerce and Business Administration faculty at Douglas College by far is the largest faculty. In fact, Douglas College now is becoming a uh, school of business uh, as compared to its other disciplines or faculties. And you can see that in the visualization of the data. Now, we wouldn't be able to visualize that unless we took all the data and we asked these questions and we could look at it. So that's kind of an example of what business intelligence is and information literacy and it, how it can correlate into a job. In fact, I parlayed that, that knowledge into a job where part of my job is looking at information literacy. So definitely take a look at this, learn it if that interests you. Now, moving on to the next one here, which is uh, transaction processing systems. This is another type of information system. Transaction processing system is exactly that, or TPS. Now, you're gonna need to know a lot of acronyms for this course, so start writing them down, because I'm gonna start testing you guys on what is uh, a TPS system and you'll have to tell me it's a transaction processing system etc so what is that it focuses on data collection and processing meaning that it's going to take data it's going to collect data and it's going to process it in a meaningful way you guys have seen this before in point of sales every time you go to Starbucks and you tap your card you tap your card it's a transaction they process it into the system so the point of sales or POS is a, an example of that. Now this is just a link to a bunch of POS systems that are out there. You can have a look at that. Uh, they use these to help reduce costs. You think, well, how does that reduce costs? Well, if you have a point of sales where you just tap, it's so quick, it's electronic, it collects your data off your card, it authenticates it through a process and, and it validates. It then resends back whether you have been approved or disapproved for that those funds used for to reduce the cost of the company so it applies to structured tasks and it keeps track of, of it's a great point of sale systems are great at keeping track of records um, repetitive type of information uh, usually simple repetitive redundant it simplifies clerical operations and it's good for inventory control so every time they tap they know exactly how much they sold and how much they need to reorder or purchase so transaction processing systems, again, it's another example of an information system. It helps, these help reduce uh, people involved 
in doing it because you're automating all these processes. So you don't need to do, have as many people. Again, you're saving a lot of money with the right transaction processing system. All right, so let's move on to the managing an information system part one. What is a management information system? It's the name of this course, MIS. Well, if you click on it, it'll give you a, a description about from the Wikipedia page, and you guys can go in there and click on that, and it'll give you pretty very basic information here of what it is. But it, it's a it's a broad category, information managing an information system because there's so much information in so many different dis disciplines. But the, the fundamental use of a managing information system is to collect information to help you make decisions on your business or for helping out um, making better choices in a, a sense to save money and be more produ pr productive. All right. So organize integrates the hardware and the software, which is one of the key components is hardware. Second is software data which it collects it then the information system should process and there's also people involved that's you so how do you fall into an managed information system well you have to work with a, a computer with a software program you're going to have to collect data you're going to have to ask questions to process the data into meaningful information that humans can then read and understand so it's sort of a a, a package of information so how do, which computer system you're going to need what software system best suits your needs, how are you going to collect that data, what questions, and who's going to do it. All right, so uh, des they're designed to, to produce information timely, it's integrated, it's relevant, it's accurate information, useful information for decision making. So if, and I see a lot of these different systems, and sometimes they're not producing timely information, sometimes they're not integrated with other systems that well. Uh, sometimes the information is not that accurate. There's reasons for that. So the information that you get at the end is not that useful. So really, you want to become as efficient as possible and as accurate as possible. So I keep stressing that in this <laughs> course. All right. Designing tasks. Uh, define the system's objectives that you want to do. You want to collect and analyze the data and then provide information in a useful format for decision makers. So these information systems, their, their primary focus is designed around achieving some kind of system objective. You want a certain type of information out of it. So you have to collect the right information. You have to analyze it in a meaningful way to provide information to who needs it at the right time. They need that for making decisions. Uh, an ex a quick example, and I'll use this from time to time, is here at Douglas College, we want to define a system with objectives that are going to be uh, helping us organize our students into classes to get them to their to, to get them to their goal. So we need to collect data like the students' names and the course information. We need to analyze that to put the right student in the right class to provide the information to the right faculty members so we can make decisions on when we should offer these courses or or whatnot. So that's kind of a quick example of of uh, our managing information system at Douglas College. All right, there are lots of different managing information systems and each student in the class is gonna select one and they're gonna do a presentation on one. And these can be done either in a private organization or a public institution like Douglas College. All right, now some of the key major components of this system would be, and these are the four, and you get tested on this all the time and you'll have to see what point does that apply to that particular stage. So this is like a continuum of a managing information system. The system should be able to collect the data. It should collect information like what, for example, if, if a student comes into Douglas College, you want to collect their name, their birth date, all the relevant information. All that information on its own doesn't mean anything unless it's organized in a database. So if you take the name Ryan, my name, on its own doesn't mean a lot. You might think it's a name, but when you correlate it with Ryan Caldwell, my first and my last name, well, now you know it's probably a name. You don't know who it is because there could be multiple Ryan Caldwells. But if you correlate that with my birth date, my address, my and all my other information, it becomes, it becomes more meaningful. And we can take that information and we can ask questions to the information. We could say, well, what courses is Ryan signed up for? And I can ask that question, I can process that from the data, and I can get a report 
back that says that I'm in so many classes. I'm taking all these different classes. So an information system collects data, organizes the data, asks questions to the data or filters and asks information and creates meaningful information. Now I put this in here, Gigo, garbage in, garbage out. It means if you don't enter in the right name or the right wrong birth date or whatever, you're entering garbage in, it collects, correlates the garbage. Even if you ask the right question, you're gonna get garbage out. So garbage in data, you get garbage out information. That's why it's so important the data going in is very, very um, verified. It's validated before it goes in. All right, so that's um, my 25 minute limit. So I'll, I'll stop it there and we'll see you in the next video.